Jesus. Welcome to South Ashboro Church of God. So good to see you in God's house tonight. Uh, I hope you came expecting a blessing. You know, they say blessings come upon the wings of praise. So let's do that right now. Let's stand and let's praise and pray tonight as we open up the service. Precious Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We just thank you. We praise you. We love you. Lord God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord God, for this opportunity to be in your house tonight, Lord God. Lord, I ask God, you just reach down tonight, Lord, just God, pour out a blessing, Lord God. Lord, help us receive, Lord God, everything that you've got in store for us, Lord God. Lord, I ask God, you reach down tonight, touch our pastor, Lord God, anoint him in a mighty way, Lord God. Lord, help him, Lord God, anoint him as he brings the word before us tonight. Lord God, just touch him, Lord God, touch us. Lord, I ask God, you knew who was going to be here tonight. You knew what the main need would be, Lord God. Those who are watching online, Lord God. Lord, I ask God, you just pour out your spirit in a mighty way, Lord. We just thank you and praise, Lord. Touch the song service tonight, Lord God. Minister in a mighty way. Give you praise, give you honor, give you glory for all that you have done, all you're going to do, Lord God. You're a wonderful God. You're worthy to be praised. Praise your holy name. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hall
Praise the Lord. Let's continue to worship with Sister Amy, Sister Sharon, and Sister Tina come to minister in song. Praise God. Hallelujah. Revival, amen. They're gonna sing about that tonight. I want to see a good old fashioned revival. Thank you. Revival, sin erasing, devil chasing, Holy Ghost revival. Praise God. Ephesians 6 and 23 said, Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God is our source of uh, peace. Uh, I like the sign that said, No God, K N O W, no God, no peace, K N O W. Or N O, no God, and N O, no peace. So if you, if you know God, you'll know peace. But if you have no God, you know you have no peace. Let's continue to worship and give and get our ushers to receive an evening offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Brother Eddie, would you pray with us time of worship? So blessed for your faithfulness and giving. Praise God. Announcements, uh, having Bible study this Saturday at 2 o'clock. And if you come, we're going to be having some finger foods. If you don't bring some finger foods, we're going to have some food afterwards. So uh, we're looking for a good time, but Brother Zach's going to continue to study in uh, Revelation. Uh, baptismal service on June the 25th. Our, uh, that uh, night service will be having baptism over to the other building. Uh, Revival night, June the 9th through the 11th with Brother Tim Dean. Uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Sister Amy's going to be holding a Bible study at Brother Floyd's church over in Denton. Uh, youth Carowinds uh, uh, time is going to be on August the 1st. Their trip is August 1st to Carowinds. Uh, also today is Sister Ball's birthday. I know they're not here tonight, but if you're watching online tonight, happy birthday, Sister Ball. Praise God. Anybody else have a prayer request? Remember Sister uh, Sarah's children. Yes. Now, I haven't even done the prayer request yet, but uh, Brother Eddie, I'm, I'm going to let you stay back up since you're back. Your back still bothering you? Or, I don't want to wear you out, Brother. Are you, are you okay to walk up here? Okay, I just don't want to bother you back there. I know he's been having some problems. We're believing God's healed his back. Continue praying for uh, Sister Key's healing from cancer. Continue praying for Brother Eddie. God, walk on up your brother in faith. You're going to be healed. Yeah. Praise God. Uh, pray for uh, Brother and Sister Shortridge uh, and Brother Willard's healing. Continue praying for Lawson uh, Ferguson for his salvation and healing. Pray for James Payne for salvation and healing. Also, he goes for surgery on June the 7th. Pray for him. Uh, continue to pray for Sister Angela's healing. Pray for Robert uh, Roberts healing. This is Mark Roberts' daddy. Pray for him for healing. Pray for the family of Cindy Parker. They've called her family and Sister Blanche has given in a request for her many a time. But they've called the family and so remember that family. Uh, pray for Brother and Sister Bob. They need a touch in their body tonight. Pray for Sister Sandra. Uh, pray for uh, Selena's job situation. Anybody else have a prayer request? Pray for tyranny. Yes. Please stand. Hallelujah. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you.
Let's go ahead and stand again. Let's let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to Sister Ball tonight. She's probably watching online. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Praise God. Amen. Let's continue to worship with Sister Amy, Sister Brady, and Sister Harris come and minister in song. Prayed for us and God moved and touched us. I'm so thankful for the touch of God. Amen. Amen. Your holy 
There's no one like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord is great, greatly to be praised. If you receive salvation, you've received a miracle. There's miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance. There's many miracles, and he's the maker of them all. This time we turn to service to our pastor, Will Shelton. Amen. If you've been a recipient of this miracle of God's grace, His saving power, lift up your hands and let's praise Him and love Him and thank Him for it tonight. This is the greatest gift that's ever known to mankind, is the gift of salvation. And God, in His mercy and grace, saw fit to redeem fallen mankind. He could have redeemed those fallen angels, that third of those angels who followed the devil, followed Lucifer, who became the devil, became Satan. He could have redeemed them, but he chose to redeem us. See, man, we had nothing to offer him, nothing but dust, nothing but dirt, nothing of any value per se, but yet God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. That's more than just repeating a prayer after a preacher in an altar more than just saying, I believe. The devils believe and tremble. We know they're not saved. That word believe means to adhere to, to trust, to follow. If you say you believe him, you're going to live your life for him. Amen? And we ought to live our lives for him. He's done everything for us. Amen? Given us everything. Somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, I don't have a whole lot. If you've got this pearl of great price, you've got everything you need. What more do you need? And this great gift of God. Amen. We're glad to see you in God's house tonight. Happy birthday to Sister Ball. Uh, she shares a birthday with my father-in-law. Uh, his birthday is today as well. So if he watches, happy birthday to you too, Granddaddy. Let's stand and get in the Word of God tonight. Glad you're here on a Wednesday night. Amen. James chapter 4 this evening. I believe God's going to talk to us for a little while this evening. I love and appreciate you. We're thankful for what God's doing. And I agree with Sister Shelton, we want to go to heaven together. We want to make it to heaven. If we miss heaven, we've missed everything. Great God. We have a short time in this life. God gives us time here to prepare for eternity. So we've got to make sure that we take advantage of this opportunity to make sure we're ready to go into eternity. Can you say amen? James chapter 4, reading verse 14 tonight. James said, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Whereas ye know not what shall be on tomorrow, we don't know what's coming tomorrow. We don't know. We've got plans. All of us in this house have got plans for tomorrow. You've got plans for the remainder of this week, maybe the weekend. But James says, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to take place tomorrow. For what is your life? What is our life? We think that we'll live to get old and then we'll die. Is that right? That's the way most people think. I'm young. Well, I'm getting older, but I've still got time. He said, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you again, Jesus, for letting us be in this house. Thank you for touching Brother Charlie tonight, helping him. As he moderates the service, Lord. Thank you for the singers tonight, God, that's blessed our heart. Thank you for good Christian singers, people that love the Lord and live for you and sing about their experience, and sing to you for your glory. We ask you, God, that you'll help us now for the next little while as we've come to the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, the next thing after this, if time stands, will be that altar call. And I pray, God, that we'll all find our way in this altar tonight. We all have needs here. We all need to seek you more. We all need to draw closer to you. There's not one of us in this house that could say we're just as close as we can get. but We can get closer still, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll touch this precious people that's here tonight, those that are watching online, those that will watch online, Lord. We pray, God, that something will be said or done tonight in this message 
that will touch somebody's heart, that will change somebody's eternity, God, that will change direction for somebody, Lord, that will take somebody off the broad road and put them on a straight and narrow path that will lead to heaven. I need your help now, Lord, as always. Thank you for touching Brother Eddie, God. We're believing for complete healing. In it, my God, for complete healing in his body, Father. Thank you for touching us daily, God. You're our strength. We can do all things through you, Lord. Father, we just praise you now and worship you, God. Help us now for the next little while. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. You may be seated for a little while tonight. Today I was thinking as I was studying, praying. Today is another day. Birthdays for some, we've already acknowledged that. But for all of us, every one of us, we're all one day closer to either heaven or hell. Today I drew closer to heaven. If I'm a Christian. Today I drew closer to hell if I'm a sinner. Leonard Ravenhill said this. How many know I like Leonard Ravenhill? Leonard Ravenhill said, The surest thing in the world is not death and taxes. Anybody ever heard that? Two things that are certain, death and taxes. He said, That's not the surest thing in the world. He said, It's death and eternity. Yet, we're so unconcerned. Those two things are going to happen. Death and eternity. He said, yet we're so unconcerned. We have a short time in this life to prepare to meet the Lord our God. Everybody that comes through that birth canal that's born into this world, uh, God's going to give them an opportunity if they, as long as they reach the age of accountability. God's going to give them the opportunity to prepare to meet Him. So we must make sure that we're prepared. Can you say Amen. I want to preach to you now on this thought for a little while. Here today and gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. James said here in our scriptures tonight in verse 14 of James chapter 4, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The Amplified Bible says this, Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. What is the nature of your life? You are really but a wisp of vapor, a puff of smoke, a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air. What James is saying here is this, is that our time on this earth our time in this life is running out. I told Sister Shelton just sometime this week, I believe it was, I said, I've been so concerned and so burdened over our young people. Anybody have that burden today? I've been burdened over our youth, some of the youth in this church, and certainly young people around the world. I don't know if there's ever been a time in the history of man where the devil has made a, an effort to assault our young people. I know there's always been an attack on the youth, but it's seemingly in this hour the devil has set his sights on this young generation to pervert them, to distract them, to get them entangled in things of this world, sinful things, and to cause them to lose sight of their eternal soul. I told Sister Shelton I'm concerned about some of the choices that some of our young people are making today. The danger is, is that they see no danger when it comes to sin. They get in church. They're raised in church. They grow up, seemingly grow up. Then they get out of church, and they get entangled in things in this life. Some of them have gotten far away from the Father and far away from the Father's house. I began to think today while I was praying over this message and thinking about even some of the young people down through the years that, that we've known personally or known uh, indirectly, uh, uh, young men and women who have died and been buried and now that lifeless body is laying in that graveyard. 
young people who seemingly they had their whole lives ahead of them. They had great plans for the future. That their lives, you know, they thought I'm going to be around here a long time. But the Bible said they did not know the least thing about what would happen tomorrow. Folks had never thought they were going to die so young. Never thought that this would be their final day here on this earth. The thought of death never occurred unto them. But just as the Bible says, they were here for a little time and now their life has vanished away. They have gone out into eternity forever and forever. And I've watched people down through the years be filled with profound sadness and, and certainly profound grief at the death of a loved one. I've watched people as they pass by that casket and I've watched them cry. I've watched them mourn. I've watched them grieve. I've even watched them collapse there by that casket of a loved one who had died. I've been at the graveyard and preached funerals and services and maybe ones I wasn't preaching. But I've been there at the graveyard and I've watched as people are broken and they're in despair at the thought of losing that loved one to that hand of death. I've watched it posted on Facebook. Somebody sent it to me. I don't, I'm not on there but I've watched it. I've had it sent to me where people have said, I just can't believe they're gone. How could this happen to them? How could they be gone and leave here at such a young age? I've watched people get depressed over the loss of a loved one. I've watched people become despondent. I've watched people lose weight because they couldn't eat. They had no desire for any food because they're grieving over the loss of a family member. But I've also watched those same people, people that were heartbroken, people that were in disbelief, people that were shocked by death. I've watched them continue to live a sinful life. I've watched them to continue uh, even through death, even through the death of a loved one, uh, continue to live their lives uh, as though they're going to live forever. Uh, I've watched them, Brother Jerry, stand by a casket uh, and cry and weep and grieve uh, and then go right back out in that world uh, and, and partake of the sins of this world uh, and act as though that's what happened to them uh, is never going to happen to me. They don't get right with God. They don't come to an altar. Uh, they don't beg God to save them. Uh, amen. They continue right on uh, that broad road of destruction uh, that's going to lead to their loss of their eternal soul. I've come to the conclusion today, uh, even death don't wake some people up. I said even death, uh, the death of a close loved one, uh, the, the shocking death of a young person uh, does not stir that heart, uh, does not melt that heart, uh, does not cause that individual uh, to realize uh, that what happened to them uh, is going to happen to me somewhere down the road. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 and 27, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. The Bible tells us that what happened to that one laid in that casket uh, is going to happen to each and every one of us. I know we don't like to talk about the subject of death. Uh, amen. But death must be a reality to all of us. We're not going to live forever on this earth. Death is on our trail, and one day uh, death's going to catch every one of us. Amen. So I got to make sure uh, that when my time comes to leave this life, uh, I've got to make sure that everything about me uh, is lined up with him, matched up with his word. Uh, I've got to make sure that I'm saved, uh, that I'm on the right path, uh, and that I'm ready to be absent from the body uh, and to be present with the Lord. Amen. The death of a loved one seemingly does not move people anymore. Doesn't stir their hearts. Doesn't bring fear to them. They grieve. They're sad. They're empty over that. But yet they go right back to sin. Right back to the hog pens and the hell holes of this life. I'm telling you tonight that the death of a loved one, 
the death of someone close, the death of someone that we're familiar with. It ought to cause us to do more than to just be sad. It ought to cause me to do more than just weep. It ought to cause me to do more than just to grieve and to hurt. But it ought to shake something inside of me. It ought to stir something inside of me. And it ought to cause me to realize just like their time ran out, my time's going to run out too. Just like they come to the end of their life, I'm going to come to the end of mine. I have to make sure that what I've done with Jesus will be the right thing. That I've done more than just rejoice him uh, or put him off to a later date uh, that I've taken Jesus seriously uh, that I've repented of my sins uh, I've accepted him into my heart uh, and now I'm serving him you listen to me if you're a child of God uh, you don't have to be afraid to die I said if you're a child of God uh, you don't have to fear death uh, God's already given us the victory uh, over this final battle uh, but if you are lost uh, if you you're a backslider. If you're playing around on God, every day that you wake up, you ought to be afraid that today could be the day that I lose my life and I go into eternity and I leave this life unprepared to meet God. Raise your hands and praise Him tonight. Every one of us in this house tonight, our time, our life clock is ticking even right now. Our time on this earth is just a short time. Every one of us are going to go into eternity soon. And we're going to be there forever and forever. The Bible holds no, holds no punches about it. The Bible always tells the truth. The Bible tells us clearly that we can literally be here today and be gone from this life tomorrow. Regardless of my age, regardless of my health, we're all just one breath away from leaving this life and going into eternity. We're all just one breath away from dying and either going to heaven or going to hell. Somebody said to me a number of years ago, there at the funeral of a young person, they said maybe this will wake some of our young people up. My response, I'm not trying to be cynical. I, I just know the times that we're living in. My response to that person was this. I hope that it does. I pray that it will. But the truth of it is, it probably won't. I said the truth of it is, it probably will not wake them up because their hearts are hard and they think they're going to live forever. That's a dangerous place to live your life in, to live thinking, I'm going to see another day. Amen. Because the truth is, I may not get out of this day and I may not make it into another day here. Amen. Most people on this earth today, young and old, alike. They care more about their sin than they do their soul and they do their salvation. They're living for the moment. They want to do what feels good. If it feels good, it's all right. Amen. They don't take any thought of what's coming down the road. They don't take any thought of the judgment of God. They don't take any thought of their eternal soul. But there's somebody living inside of you, inside of your flesh tent, this skin tent that's going to live forever. It's never going to die. So I've got to make sure that when my time comes uh, to shed this old earthly tabernacle uh, that my spirit and my soul uh, is going to open my eyes up over yonder in the heavens in the by and by uh, and that I'm going to make heaven uh, my eternal home. Somebody give him a hand of praise tonight. We're not surprised by these things. We're not surprised by the hardness of heart. We're not surprised by, you say, how could somebody watch a young person die and not be moved to think about their own mortality? But we're not surprised by these things because Jesus said it was going to be this way. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage 
until the day that Noah entered into that ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I'm telling you here tonight in 2023 in the United States of America, it is no different today than it was in the days of Noah. There has never been as the days of Noah were uh, as they are in this day in which we're living right now. I said there have never been days as they were in the days of Noah as what we're living in this day. The Bible said they were hard-hearted. Uh, amen. They were continually thinking on evil things. Uh, their imaginations were evil. Uh, they were perverted. Uh, they gave no thought to God. Uh, they they gave no thought to judgment. They gave no thought to their eternal soul. There's no question in my mind. In the days of Noah, they dealt with issues just like we deal with today. They had children that they buried. I'm sure some of their young people died in those days and they buried them. They buried their loved ones. They dealt with sickness and disease in that day. They faced hardships just like we do. They had struggles in that day like we do. But you listen to me. This is the sad biography of their lives. Nothing changed them. Didn't matter who died in their family. Didn't matter what kind of sickness they dealt with. Did not matter what kind of difficulties that come their way. Nothing changed them. Nothing Nothing stirred them. Uh, nothing moved them towards God. Uh, it was continually, day by day, uh, living in sin, living it up uh, like they're going to live forever. Uh, that generation did not get right with God. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, uh, we're living in the same kind of generation uh, where many people are going to be lost and undone uh, without the Lord of glory. Uh, they're going to lift up their eyes in hell uh, and they'll be there forever. Uh, Throughout eternity, nobody in that day outside of Noah and his family, nobody got right. Nobody changed. They went to the funerals of their loved ones. They buried their children. They had sickness and disease. They had problems in that day. You know, a lot of times God moves in situations where there's death, where there's sickness, where there's trouble. It's in those times God can, can get somebody's attention. But in that day, even those things did not change that generation. I want to say this to you before I go any further. If you're a child of God, you ought to get up every day saying, thank you, Jesus. If you've been saved, if you responded to his call, I don't know what it took to get you saved. I don't know what God allowed to happen in your life. But you ought to thank God. If it was the death of a family member, if it was sickness in your body, if it was financial despair, whatever happened that God got, your attention. Uh, you ought to thank him every day. Uh, thank you for setting my barley fields on fire. You got my attention uh, and now I'm saved by the grace of God. We ought to praise him for burning our barley fields. We ought to praise him for getting our attention. Whatever it took to get you to where you are, you ought to thank God for it every day. We could still be in our sins. We could still be bound for hell. But God set our barley fields on fire. He touched something close to us. And when he did, I'm glad we turned to him. And we responded to him. And he saved us by his precious grace. Somebody say amen to him tonight. They dealt with problems. There's no question God tried to get their attention. God tried to stir them. God tried to wake them up, but they would not get right with God. I've watched my grandpa used to say, sometimes God has to about kill people to try to get their attention, and even that don't work sometimes. 
I've watched people have trouble after trouble after trouble. You think this will get them. This will wake them up. This will stir their hearts. This will turn them to God. Some of those same folks, they're out there bound up in the bondage of sin right now. And if something don't happen, they're going to lose their eternal soul. I don't care if they live to be 150 years old and die peacefully in their sleep. If you die without God, you're going to lift up your eyes in hell and you cannot escape. You'll be there forever. Somebody shout amen. How in the world, how in the world can God touch our lives? How can God set our barley fields on fire? How can God bring us to the brink of death and it still not cause my heart to turn to him and surrender my life to him? My grandpa got it right. Sometimes God has to about kill us to get our attention, and even then it will not work. I've been to the hospital of people uh, who thought were dying uh, and they would not surrender their life to God. And I thought, sir or ma'am, uh, if this don't change you, uh, there ain't nothing in this world going to change you. Uh, I've been to the hospital when it looked like they were not going to make it. Uh, they were not going to survive. Uh, they called on the Lord. Uh, but then when they got better, uh, they went right back out there in the hog pens uh, and the hell holes of this world. Uh, I want to tell you, Judgment's going to come. Our time on this earth is limited. It's going to run out. If God's gave you an opportunity, you better open your heart's door and let him come in and lock that door, throw away the key, and don't ever cause him to leave your life again. Somebody praise him tonight. Amen. They lived in the days of Noah. You think we're going to live forever? They thought we got plenty of time. All oh, the troubles of that day. I know they had troubles because Job said in Job 14 and 1, man born of woman is few days and full of trouble. They had trouble, but they continued to live in sin. They would not give their lives to God. They took no thought of death. They took no thought of judgment. They didn't think in terms of heaven or hell. Uh, they're living it up, uh, and they're loving their sin. Uh, all the while not realizing uh, their time is running out. The Bible said, but God in his mercy and grace, the only reason that the sinner's still on this earth living and breathing right now is because of the mercy and grace of God. The only reason you and I were able to be saved and not go to hell forever is because of the mercy and the grace of God. I'm telling you tonight, you may not have two pennies to rub together in your pocket. You may have sickness in your body. You may have more troubles in your life than you can shake a stick at. But if you're a recipient of the grace and the mercy of God, we are blessed. I said we are are blessed beyond compare. God in his mercy and grace, he raised up Noah, a preacher of righteousness. And Noah began to preach to that generation. Noah began to tell them it's going to rain. A flood's going to come. You better get on board this ark. You better get your family on here. You better make things right with God. He warned them over and over for the space of about 120 years that judgment's going to come time. Your time is going to run out. But the Bible said they refused the message. They refused to hear. They would not listen. That's the most dangerous and the worst place to be in is to not listen to the warnings of the Word of God. I'm telling you, there's a lion roaring in this country today. Hey Amen. God is shaking this nation, trying to get our attention, trying to alert us. It was God that sent the storm while Jonah's on the bottom of that ship fast asleep, trying to wake up Jonah. God's trying to stir us. God's trying to get our attention. And the worst place to be in is to refuse to hear and listen to the warning of the word of God they refused to listen they refused to hear the Bible said they continued 
to live their lives eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, taking no thought that their days upon this world, they were numbered. When that ark was completed, the Bible said God invited Noah and his family, come in here with me. Come inside this ark and God left the door of that ark open for seven more days. But some of the saddest commentary that you read in the word of God can be found there in the book of Genesis. When God's, the Bible said God left the door open for seven more days, one week of his mercy was left. One week of his grace was left. And yet I don't read where anybody any young person, any older person, any middle-aged person, any family, any husband or wife, amen, nobody else boarded that ark. Nobody else got on there. They didn't believe the message. They didn't believe what the preacher had said. And the Bible said that God finally shut the door. And when he shut the door, his grace and mercy was removed from that generation and the judgment of God began to fall on them. Their time had run out on this earth. They had waited too late. Amen. People are going to wait too late today. I said people are going to wait too late. Time is running out. I said time is running out. The judgment of God's going to come. They waited and they waited too late. And they perished in that flood. I personally believe hell had to enlarge itself that day. Because so many people dropped off into hell. So many souls died that day. Amen. You read the story. They were literally here one day. And they were gone the next. I said they were here eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. They were here going about their daily lives one day, and then they were gone into eternity the very next day. They died in their sins. They died without God. The door was, oh great God, the door was open. Grace was extended. The mercy of God was revealed to them. But yet they died in their sins and they perished. And did you realize, here we are thousands of years later and those souls are still there burning in the flames of hell tonight. They'll never get out. They'll never escape. They waited one day too late and it Cost them their eternal souls. What in the world? What in the world will it take to wake people up today? What in the world is it going to take to wake our young people up today? Don't you come out to the service and tell me I wish we had more. I wish our young people could have heard this message tonight. They've already heard this message. If they've been in this church any time at all, they've already heard this message before. They're accountable. They'll be judged for it. We say, well, we wish, you know, wish so-and-so could be here, wish that one could be here, wish this one could be here. To hear. they, they've been in this church. They've heard this message before. They waited one day too late. They had no idea what was coming. They thought they had another day. They thought they had more time. But the Bible tells us not one of us, none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We can literally be here today uh, and tomorrow our family can be planning our funeral. Are you hearing me? Uh, I said I can be living, breathing on this earth, uh, going about my daily routine, uh, doing what I always do. uh, And before that day's over, uh, I can leave this life uh, and tomorrow my family be at the funeral home uh, trying to figure out what they're going to do about my funeral, uh, what they're going to bury me in, uh, who's going to preach the service, uh, what's going to happen from this day forward we can be here today and we can literally be gone tomorrow why don't that wake people up why don't that stir people why don't that cause their hearts to open and say great God if that's the truth well it is it's the Bible if that's the truth I better find me an altar I better get out of this life I'm living I 
better run to the Savior. That, that backslider ought to come to themselves and say, I'm not going to continue to live like this any longer. I'm going to go back to my father. I'm going to go back to his house. I'm going to sit back at his table. I want to make sure that when my time comes to leave that I'm prepared to meet the Lord my God. What will it take to wake up our young people? We still have preachers of righteousness today. Not your pretty heads at me. I said, we still have men of God, preachers of righteousness today that are preaching this blessed book. Why are our altars barren? Why are sons and daughters not being birthed into the kingdom of God in the altars of our churches today? Why is it that, that people know, they know, some of them know, some of them were raised in church, some of them know the right way, They've been trained the right way. They've been taught the right way. Why is it that knowing all of this, that they still live as though they're going to live forever? How is it that they can take their eternal soul for granted? I'll tell you the answer to it. The answer is this. They love their sins more than they care about their soul. They'd rather have a momentary pleasure that will cost them their soul forever and forever than to surrender their hearts and their lives unto Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. It's better to serve the Lord. I said it's better to serve the Lord and go to heaven than to gain the whole world and lose your own soul. Somebody praise him tonight. I've been to hospitals. I visited people that it looked like this was the end for them. And they still wouldn't give their heart to the Lord. I've seen people in the hospitals who were afraid, saying, Lord, don't let me die. And when the Lord don't let them die, they won't live for him. That's the sad reality of the time that we're living in. Men's hearts are hard. Even our sweet little family members that we love, yet their hearts are hardened with sin. You see, the danger of these times is this. Amen. All oh, throughout the history of the church and, and the Bible, uh, God has dealt with men. God has given men opportunities. Uh, but the Bible makes it clear as we come down to the end of this thing, uh, times are going to get perilous. Uh, and the Bible warns us uh, in these last days, uh, there's going to be a falling away. Uh, years are going to turn from the truth of God's Word. Uh, that's why uh, if you heard God call your heart uh, when you're 10 years old, uh, you should have gave your life to him because as you neglect him that heart gets harder and harder the older you get the harder it gets and the harder it is for God to get our attention we need to give our lives to him while we're young serve him all the days that you have whether you live to be 10 or you live to be 110 live your life for Jesus Christ ah Why will our young people not wake up? Why are people so hard-hearted? Because they love sin. They don't care about their eternal soul. You and I can literally be living, breathing, functioning as a human being on this earth, breathing God's air today and tomorrow your family have to call Ridge or Pew and say come and get her or him they died in the night literally I'm not promised another day on this earth oh we're even guilty at times as church people we forget we forget that we get so attached to this world, we forget about the world to come. 
So we fall into neglect. We neglect things that we shouldn't neglect. That's why it takes preaching to snap us out of it. I said that's why it takes the preaching of the word to shake us, to stir us again. I've heard people say I needed that. Well, we all need that. I, I needed that message. It, it, it snapped me back too. We all need that message to wake us up to the realization I'm here today, but I'm not promised another day on this earth. Tomorrow may never come for me. Tomorrow may never come for you. This may be the final message that I preach. If it is, it's a good one to go out of here on. I said it's a good one to go out of here on. Jesus gives us an opportunity to get our hearts right with him. There will come a time when Joab refused to come to Absalom. Absalom said, uh, you know, afflict him, touch him, do something to him, get a hold of him. Uh, he, he called him. He wouldn't come. Uh, he said, we're going to get his attention. I'm going to burn something close to him. Uh, I'm going to touch something that's going to touch his heart. Uh, and he burned his barley field. The moment Absalom or Joab found out his barley fields were burning, uh, he come running to Absalom and said, I'm here now. You got my attention. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, don't wait uh, till God has to set something on fire in your life. Uh, don't wait till God has to take something away from you. Uh, don't wait until God has to put something on you uh, to cause you to turn to him. Uh, amen. Today Today's the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, don't you harden your heart. Open up and let him come in. If you've drifted away, today's the day to snap out of it. Today's the day to open your eyes again and draw near to God. And God will draw near unto you. For some, it's going to take dying. That's the only thing that's going to wake them up is dying, is death. And then it will be eternally too late. And then they're going to realize finally that God really means what he says. He really means what he says in that book. It'll be too late. It will be eternally too late. They'll be lost forever. I told Sister Shelton this week, maybe the weekend, but I think it was this week. I'm concerned about some of our young people. Was that this week? Because you can't take fire in your bosom and not burn your hide. You can't play around with sin and think it ain't going to find you out and think it ain't going to get you and snare your life. I told her, I said, I'm concerned about some of our young folks in this church. Things they're messing around with. Things they're doing that they know they're not supposed to do. They've got, they've got mom and dad food. They've got grandma and grandpa food. They've got aunt and uncle food. They may even fool the preacher, but they ain't got God food. I told her this week, I'm afraid trouble's going to come down the road for some of these young people that are praying or playing around on God. If that don't keep you up at night, I don't know what can keep you up at night. If that don't burden your heart, I don't know what can burden your heart. Sometimes God has to about kill us. I've watched him do it. I've watched him nearly kill people to try to shake them out of the place they were in and they still will not surrender their lives to God. The only thing left for that life is a door shut and grace and mercy withdrawn and an eternity lost without God in the flames of hell. What will it take to cause us to finally understand? You say, well, Brother Shelton, sister, come on, get ready to play softly, please. I got a lot more, but. You say, well, they're young. They are young, but they've been raised in church. They don't have any excuses. That, that child out there has never been raised in church. Mom and daddy lives like the devil. Let them do anything they want to do. Let them live in sin. God's going to give them a little more grace. God's going to give them, I, I believe God's going to give them a little more grace. 
But that one that's been raised in church, that's been taught the principles of God's Word, I don't believe God's going to play around with them. Much is required of someone like that. They'll both die and go to the same hell if they don't get right with God. But that one who knows, who knows what they're doing is not right. But they've sat on a church pew. They've sat under preaching the gospel. They've sat in a classroom. They've heard the teaching of the word of God. But they just don't believe what God says to be true. I don't know how merciful and graceful God will be to that. Because they've been blessed to set under the truth, to be taught the right way. What's going to take to wake people up today? In a, in a world, a, a generation of young people that's never been under the assault like our young people are right now. I've never read or seen of a generation that the devil has specifically targeted young people like this generation to pervert their minds, to tell them that everything in here is a lie, that there is no God, there is no heaven, there is no hell. Live it up while you have time. Have a good time while you got the time. But you're going to live forever. And when that day comes to leave this life, they believe they're just gone. They don't, there's nothing beyond this. We have preachers of righteousness. Thank God for them. Everybody stand, please. Thank God for the preachers of righteousness. There's going to come a day when the preaching is going to stop. There will not be any more altar calls, Sister Sarah. God's last altar call will be given. Summer's past, and we are not saved, said Jeremiah. The summer's past, the harvest is over, and we are not saved. We're called to number our days on this earth. Our days are numbered by God. The psalmist said in Psalms 90 and 12, So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. In other words, remember God while you're young. Remember God in your youth. Not one of us may be planning to leave this world today. But we must make sure that we're prepared in case we do leave this world today. Ain't nobody in this church planning on dying tonight. Nobody, none of us are thinking that. But I better make sure I live my life in such a way that I'm prepared just in case I do die and leave this world tonight. Before this day's over, how many times have we seen it happen? Before the day's over, a family is having to make funeral arrangements. What a sobering thought that is. I read the story in closing. Last year in June, this was in another country. The story said 21 underage teenagers were partying after the end of school exams. And they died in a mysterious incident at a nightclub. It said the bodies of many of the victims, the youngest, a 13-year-old girl, were discovered by police lying on tables slumped in chairs and couches and sprawled on the dance floor of the club in the early hours of a Sunday morning. This is what struck me. The police said they died as they danced. He said they dance, fall, and die, literally. Dance in the night away and they fall and they die and go into eternity. I never read what the end result of it, but it did say that those, those, those young people, 21 of them, aged from 13 to 17, they were celebrating their school exams being over, they're dancing in a nightclub, 
and they all died that night in the early hours of the Sunday morning. He said they literally fell where they were at. Some were slumped in chairs, some in benches, some on the dance floor, but they literally fell and died, some of them, while they were dancing. The story said they didn't know whether they ingested something, whether there was a gas or a poisonous gas leak in that facility. Whatever happened, they went into eternity that night while they were dancing and living it up and having a good time. That's the reality of what James is talking about. We can literally be here today. Our life is a vapor and be gone before tomorrow comes. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. If you're not ready to meet the Lord, I don't know your hearts tonight. I, you do. God does. If you're in this house and you're not ready to meet the Lord, if you're not ready for heaven, if you're lost, if you're a backslider, if you're playing around on the Lord, if you've gotten distracted by this world, We don't stay close to God. This world will distract us. Rest assured. Maybe you've become lukewarm. Maybe you're cold and indifferent. Maybe you're sinning. And the Lord has called you through this message tonight. Maybe He's calling you right now. Why don't you come to these altars right now? If he's calling you right now, why don't you come to these altars right now? And get everything under the blood. Get those things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Lay the axe to the root once and for all and be done with it. If you neglected him, you didn't lose your first love. You just left it. And you want to return and fall in love with Him again. If you've been distracted tonight, you want to get your focus back on Him. And He's talked to you right here tonight, right now. Come on down here right now. And let Him help you in this house. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Don't put this off to tomorrow because tomorrow may never come for you. We're here today and we are gone tomorrow. That's going to happen to every one of us. I'm going to be here one day, and tomorrow I won't be here. Every one of us in this house, I told you at the beginning of this message, are one day closer to either heaven or hell. If you're not sure you're ready for heaven, come on to these altars tonight. Come on to these altars tonight. I'm on to these altars tonight. I want to wait just a few minutes because I, I, you know, I just want to make sure. Let's pray, church. Let's pray. Come on to these altars tonight. I didn't come to try to scare you. I just come to preach the word of God to you. This is all our reality, every one of us. Today here, tomorrow gone. Every one of us, regardless of who you are, anything about your background, what your age is, today here, tomorrow gone. That's going to happen to each and every one of us. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm gone. Would you come, please?
Would you come, please? Would you come? Would you come? I want to be real gentle here with this. Sister Sharon, if you're okay. She testified to it, her sister. She was out doing things normally on that day. She didn't make it to another day. She went into eternity. Literally out doing things just like she normally would do. Died in the morning. Left this life. Nobody knew that was coming. Nobody had time to prepare for that. Here today and gone tomorrow. I want us tonight to come, everybody that will, and I want us to pray for lost souls. One lady told me one time, she said, I prayed to the Lord, whatever it takes to wake my son up, whatever it takes. She told me later, she said, I didn't know God was going to do that. I didn't know God was going to do that. Whatever it takes. Let's pray for our youth. I hear these names mentioned in the preliminaries week in and week out. Pray for this young person. Pray for that young person. I hear it week in and week out. There's going to come a day, according to the Word of God. Pray for this loved one. Pray for that lost loved one. Pray there's going to come a day. There'll be no more tomorrows for them. I remember praying for a man for years to be saved. I prayed for years, God, please save him. I beg God, I beg God. And the night he died, God spoke to my heart and said, don't, don't pray another prayer for him because he's gone now. There's no more prayers to be made for his soul. He made his choice. I'll never forget God saying that to me in that prayer time. They called and they said, he's gone. And God said, don't pray for him anymore. He's made his choice. You're just going to think of me what you want to, but I'm going to tell you what happened in my own experience. I had a, a man that come to church and God preached to that man through a messenger that night. He walked out of that service and rejected God. And I prayed for him and prayed for him, and God told me, he said, don't pray for him anymore. He rejected me. I have rejected him. He come down to time to die. His family said, oh, he's going to live. Oh, he's going to all this stuff. And God told me. God spoke. I went to pray for him. God said, don't pray for him. He rejected me. And I rejected him. A few days later, he dropped off into eternity. I heard some of the families say, we've been praying. God says he's going to live. He's going to heal him. going to be all right. All this stuff. And God said, I rejected him because he rejected me. Oh, my God. Brother Blackman said he was in the hospital with a woman who has backslid on God. She's on up in age. She's dying. 
She said, get the preacher to come, please. And he walked in that room and he said, it's cold in there, spiritually cold. She said, preacher, please help me pray. I've, I'm away from God and I'm trying to get back with him and I can't feel God. Brother Blackman said, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. He said, but I could not feel or find God in the hospital room. And he said, I watched that backslidden woman drop off into hell. Because somewhere down the road, she hardened her heart towards God. That's why the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. You say, Brother Shelton, that, that's a cruel God that would, that would not give you another chance. No, no, that's God's grace that he gives you the chance. It's God's grace that he gives that soul the opportunity. But once he knocks on that heart's door, he, he's not obligated to ever come back and knock again. Maybe he will, and he does. I don't understand his ways. But I do know what his word says. If you hear my voice today, don't you harden your heart against me. As Israel did in the days of provocation when they provoked the Holy One of Israel, they provoked me to anger and wrath. You open your heart and you give it to Him and you give it to Him. All of it. Don't be religious. Don't just talk the religious jargon. but be saved and sold out to the Lord of glory. Father, I thank you for helping me preach this message tonight. It was not easy to preach, Lord. 